Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is uh, the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Craft. That's in the dirty, dirty South. Hey, uh, I know I skipped yesterday, and not to give you guys an excuse or a reasoning, but yesterday I was so covered up, time got away from me, and I didn't have an opportunity and a chance to do the uh, part three in the series of the Hey Dude shoes, uh, the custom, the custom Hey Dude shoes. But I'm coming back today. Now, today I know I told you we was going to get into the carving, uh, carving work and laying down the pattern and the print, carving the, uh, the pattern and doing some uh, background tooling work and, and things like that. But I could not find my jeweler's rouge with, uh, it's somewhere. So in the midst of the move and getting the shop re, re, re set up, uh, the new shop set up, I completely lost my jeweler's rouge and I haven't had time to run to Harbor Freight and get some. So uh, we're going to go straight into the tooling work part of it so you guys can have at least a start on, on uh, some part so we can keep this series continuously going. So, but just to drop some information on you guys right quick, if you ever need jeweler's root uh, and uh, you don't have a, a, uh, a jewelry place that's in your area, or some place that you can go and pick it up. They don't sell it at Walmart. They don't sell it any other place that I know of other than Harbor's Freight. Now, it's the same uh, roots, uh, not just, they call it jeweler's roots because a lot of jewelry companies use it to polish uh, jewelry, uh, rings, necklaces, pendants, things like that. But they also sell it at Harbor Freight because a lot of people in the hardware industry use it to fine tune their knives. So if you're in the knife sharpening and things like that, especially if you use um, your your exacto knives, you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of exacto knives uh, or even your utility knives. You can just put you some jeweler's rouge on, on a nice little rotary tool. And I, I think I did a video uh, before where you guys can pick up this little uh, nice little uh, rotary tool at Harbor Freight. They have them over there for $14.99 again minimize your spending on the front end to maximize your profits on the back end and this is one of the tools that I use religiously especially when you're carving. Uh, the main reason why you want to uh, get you a rotary tool and this has a nice little felt uh, tip on it just to show you guys just a nice little spinning tip but this is all that I use this tool for is to keep my carving blades uh, sharp and keep them keen. Uh, you can also use them to polish out a lot of the dross that's into your tools, uh, and it'll take a lot of the, the, the calcium deposits and build up into your tools, but it's mainly primarily used, what I use it for, is to keep all of my, my cutting tools, uh, even my end punches, my, my strap end punches, uh, uh, and also my half moon punches, to keep them sharp. Uh, and you can use this, but you can pick up this little tool right here, for uh, and if you if you have an account with Harbor Freight, uh, which is very it's free, you don't have to spend any money to, to get into it, and they send you all of the coupons. Sometimes they have these little tools marked down to nine ninety nine, and as well as you can go right over there to the uh, whatever however your Harbor Freight is set up, your jewelers rouge will be on the far back wall right over there next to the uh, exacto knives and a lot of the, the sharpening tools um, that they, they sell there in your Harbor Freight. And you can find them in several different colors. White, they come in white, gray, green, and black. Now, the darker the color, the more harsh uh, uh, abrasive, abrasive, abrasives that are into the roots. So I only use white. Uh, when you get off into your grays and your blacks, those are for your heavier blades, kind of like uh, maybe a hunting knife or a, a lawnmower blade or anything like that. But then you have to have a bigger type of uh, polishing wheel to get those type of knives sharpened. But you can do it very well. Uh, it comes in a little tube about maybe four to five inches long. And you can get them for $1.99. Sometimes you can get them in a two-pack for $3.99. Now you can't go wrong with getting that white and a gray. The gray will be more or less for your strap-in punches uh, or even your hole punches. You can use uh, the gray to keep those because it's made from a different metal alloy 
than just your regular uh, uh, your regular stamping tools or your um, now on my blades and, and I'm, I'm gonna say this real quick uh, if you have a carving knife and this is the new, uh, it's not really new, it's been around in Tandy for a while. And you guys know I'm still a Tandy guy, always have been, always will be. Um, but um, you can use a ceramic blade and the white works best with your ceramic blade. Now you have to keep in mind, this is ceramic so you don't want to use any other color jewelers rouge on the ceramic blade because it will start to make your point and your tip alter shape because it's a harsher abra uh, 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 abrasive product. So the white works best and all you do is just take that jeweler's rouge, turn your blade on, turn your rotary tool on and just dip it down into your jeweler's rouge just to get it coated and then you'll lay that onto the tip of your, your angle blade or your square blade, whichever one you have and just make sure you do it the same on both sides so you can keep your point true on that. Now, once you ruin a ceramic tip blade, that's it. There's no way to make to true that blade back up again. But if you have a metal tip angle blade, and I have one on my, my desk, uh, if you have an angle blade, you know, you can pretty much take that to a professional uh, blade sharpener and they can keep that uh, that blade trued up because it's all into the, 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 the math at that point. You know, they can break it all the way down to the, the thousandth millimeter, uh, decimal uh, on there to make sure that the blade is true on both sides. But just to keep you going and into your craft, it doesn't matter which tip you have, the ceramic or the metal, you still want to be able to keep that tip trued up and keen and sharp. So with that, uh, I've lost my jeweler's roots, so I can't go into uh, the carving part of it, but just keep a note. If you're carving at any time and your knife starts to drag, then at that point, you have too much calcium buildup onto your blade. Now, um, the rule uh, that I've learned during the time that I was taking the Tandy's class was pretty much out of every two to four cuts, you want to go ahead and, you know, rouge your blade up. You know, go ahead and get it, uh, get all of that dross and all of the calcium buildup off. So. I'm going to angle down the camera uh, at this point in time and then we're going to go right into the tooling work on, uh, in my case, I put my tooling work on the right foot uh, and I just have a section as you guys can see. Um, I'm going to tool in this part of it and I'm just not, I'm going to go back and do the carving work so I can lay down my background and tool uh, around the edges, the edge borders and all of that. But I'm going to go ahead and start the tooling work in here. Now on this particular piece, uh, I think you guys can see that. I did a diagonal slant line across my shoe, uh, across my top. I'm just going to go with a diagonal line and I'm just going to put a simple uh, basket weave. And I chose the small basket weave because it's a small piece, a small product project. But if you don't have the small tool, the uh, I forget the exact numbers off of it and I will go back in the uh, description and give you guys the exact number tools that I use. So uh, if you don't have it in your arsenal, you can go ahead and add that to your wish list and get that. Um, and, and pretty much most of your crafters, on the smaller the project, the smaller you want to buy the tools. That's why we buy these small tools because we work on a lot of various size pieces. So let's get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to angle this down so you guys can see what we're doing and what we got going on. Let me pull my britches now. Uh, and we're just going to go with a simple stamping here and so you guys can know just how to work this now uh, I'm going to go with a running basket weave on this one and you guys can use and do whatever you want to use on this but just to give you an idea now I laid my first stamp down and what I'm going to do I'm going to move this up from end to end on that same line and I'm going to make a nice little mark in here just a small indention and I'm going to lay another stamp now uh, and I'm going to do this all the way up to the top of my line now reason being and I'm going to stay true to my, my line the reason why I want to do this 
is because it's going to give me even spacing throughout the entire piece. Now, this is very vital and no guesswork involved. There's no guesswork involved to make sure that your basket weave is going to have the same spacing throughout the whole entire project. And it's just a simple, easy way to do it. And it keeps everything symmetrical and everything even and lined up. And then here's the key point. When you get to this end, if you don't have enough space, then you will know to rock that tool back a little bit so when I get ready to come in with my camouflaging tool around the inside border part of it, uh, let me just show you guys this way. So I took my stamp uh, and I laid it down, got my mark in there, got my marking, and then I went from edge, the end of the, the mark to the end of the next one and I left an addition. So now all of my basket weave stamps are now evenly spaced all the way throughout the whole entire piece. Now what we're going to do here is go back and connect the two legs in the open space with a tool and I'll show you guys how we're going to do that in just a second. And all you do is just lining up the two ends, the two legs. You want to make sure that you keep those legs nice, even, and straight. Now this is the part in leather crafting that takes the most time. But this is also what gets you the ability to command that high dollar value too because we get paid for our time in a piece and not just the work from a piece. So, uh, and don't be afraid to tell your customers that um, you're 15 days out, 30 days out. Uh, right now, I have a 45 day out wait list, and it's going to be 45 days before I can get to a new customer and to start on a new piece, and that's with a paid deposit. Now, just a little quick inside of business thing, uh, and I'm not going to keep you guys on it the whole entire piece by watching me stamp, but I'm going to show you just how, how, we, how we laid this out. But don't be afraid to tell your customers and your clients that uh, you're a 15 or 30 or 45 day out. I know some crafters, they literally have a six month waiting list. Six month waiting list. And now the, um, the great part about that is, well, the good part about this, you're not rushed to, to, perform, to complete and do a piece. Anyone that's interested in your craft, or they like your work based on whatever pictures you may have posted or whatever videos you may have posted. When people fall in love with your work, they will wait. And that's the whole entire thing in the, uh, about that waiting list. And you're not rushed because they're paying for quality craftsmanship. And in that time frame, they can put a small deposit down. Um, I, it depended on the, 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 the price of the piece, but... Um, uh, they have to put at least, in, in, in my shop, they have to put out at least 15 on the minimum and no more than 20% as a deposit. That gets you on the schedule and then I take uh, uh, whatever ideas that they give me at the time that they place their order. I take their ideas and now once I get around to it, now I can always, you can always draw pieces uh, on your in your art book. That's one re another reason why we do your, your art book. Do all of your prep work in the art book because that's where you can change a lot of stuff and you don't waste material or time. So uh, it's very easy to erase than it is to do a scrap a whole piece. Because you guys know in this leather world, you don't have a chance or an opportunity for oops or uh-oh. Uh, once you hit a oops or uh-oh, that piece is done you got to start all over from scratch so in your prepping of the uh, your designing you want to go ahead and lay that down into your art book and then once that client or customer approves the artwork now you can shelf that artwork because you already know 
when it get, comes to the time for you to do the work on the leather, you already know what to put onto that piece because the customer has already approved it. And then that's the opportunity for you to exceed their expectations because now you got the time to really do it and focus. Now, so let me show you how this is laid down. Uh, you see the even spacing. I want to make sure you guys can see this based on the lighting. And I'm still working on my lighting here. Uh, but we laid that baseline down all the way up. And then you come back and you connect the legs, the two ends, to the end of your new punch. And so we're going to do this throughout the whole entire piece. Just proper spacing, taking our time, making sure that it's a nice indention into it. And then uh, on the next video, uh, when we get ready to do the arc, the carving piece, you guys will see uh, from the bottom piece, before we start carving, I'll make sure that I show you how it all turned out. So this gives you a base idea of where to start. Now, even if you don't have the small stamps or uh, the small tools that will be listed in the description, even if you have the larger ones uh, or the medium sized ones, it still gives you a pattern and a flow to go with and it's nice instruction um, actually I'll probably do another little just to give you guys some geometric shapes uh, some uh, as an alternative uh, it'll be an alternative stamping pattern that you can also download uh, into the, the project and then you guys can go from there hey all right I'm the leather cowboy I'm gonna get out of here and get the finishing stamping this product and I'll see you guys tomorrow peace